Hey guys, all right, we are back with another alternate history hub video, this time the alternate world of a southern victory. Now this is based off of some book series that I've never read and probably never will read. <laughs> I like my medieval fantasy, what can I say? I, that's what I'm a sucker for. Um, and that's also what I'm writing, I'm writing medieval fantasy, so that's that's my interest. I like magic and I like swords. Did I just say swords? Oh, brain's not no, brain's not all there today. But um, yeah, let's go ahead and explore the lore of the alternate world of a southern victory. Let's talk about the Holy South. Shit. Oh, oh God! Oh, YouTube! No, please. The American Civil was War loud. was the result of decades of tension between the North and South. Maybe even over a century. Probably over, I'd say over a century, not just decades. We all know how it ended. The United bang, bang. States won, the Confederacy was dissolved, and slavery ended. Yay. In that whirlwind of conflict, it's often cast aside that the CSA had full intentions of being a legitimate nation alongside the USA. But as they lost the war, that dream lasted only a brief moment before being snuffed out. Here's the thing, also, it would not have worked, at least if they had gone for the idea of a confederacy much like that was there in the beginning days of the united states where the united states was originally for those that may not know american history we tried for a brief time period shortly after signing the treaty of paris um in which we got into americans got independence from the british um we were there there was a, it was a confederacy the central government was extremely weak and yeah it was just extremely it had no power or influence over the um states the states could do whatever pretty much the hell they wanted they essentially were independent independent countries just branded together under a name um and so and then they had to ratify the constitute was it the kind I'm not an American historian, so I might get terms wrong, but they had to do things with the Constitution or draft up the Constitution in order to say, hey, all right, centralized government, we need to be stronger, president, executive branch, blah, 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 um, and then that's how George Washington became president. <laughs> um, yeah, and so if the Confederacy was anything like, would have, if it had been like the Confederacy that was tried before right after we got our independence it would not have lasted long or they would have to make or they'd literally take the same turn of events that um the nation that they seceded from had to take the idea of the south winning that war becoming its own country and competing against its northern neighbor has fascinated alternate history writers for decades and also it would not have been a sustainable economy the its slave market would have just completely it would have killed itself because eventually those slaves would get smart or not smart those slaves would realize that they have the numbers and they would rebel um because especially in the south it was definitely this the slaves out really had the numbers pretty much at least from my understanding, I think they had the numbers. I mean, I even covered it. I mean, actually, I might be talking out my ass there. I said, I'm, 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 I know more about the start of the American state, American government, uh, but I do not really know much of anything about the uh, the antebellum period or so civil war period, etc. It sparks the imagination of how such a nation would have operated after decades, maybe even spanning into the 20th century. What would the Confederate States of America be like? And nobody imagined such a world better than the author Harry Turtledove, who wrote a series of novels detailing an alternate reality where the United States lost the Civil War and the Confederates became their own independent nation. This is the Southern Victory series. Over the course of several novels, we see a world where the South lives on. What I want to do is talk about this world that Turtle Dove crafted, including the alternate history he made, in an easy to digest format. 
maybe even a few jokes, who knows. I'm not going to talk about characters, but if you're thinking of reading these books for the scenario alone, then I would recommend clicking off, because there are going to be spoilers. So, since this I is alternate history, how does Turtle Dove's scenario split from our own actual history? What event leads to the South winning the war? One guy doesn't screw it up. <laughs> yes, that's it. One lonely messenger actually does his job. How does this happen? In the fall of 1862, a message from General Lee himself is successfully relayed announcing a full-scale invasion of the North, Special Order 191. In our timeline, that message never made it. It was lost and intercepted by the Union, who then used said information of an invasion to catch the Confederates off guard. Whoops. In this alternate huh. timeline, things okay. are different. The Confederates, while undermanned, had tactically superior generals, and the Union, well, oh boy, using the Union's incompetence to yeah, they had the tech. Um, Lee was certainly the best, but Lee was also, I believe he was the only United States general from the state of Virginia that seceded with the South. Every other Virginia general uh, went went north, kept kept loyal to the government, and also, you know, fought against slavery. <laughs> To their advantage, Lee decides to send his troops straight across the Mason-Dixon line and into the city of Philadelphia. The southern invasion catches Union General George McClellan off guard. The Union forces are viciously defeated, leaving the city open for Confederate capture. The fall of Philadelphia is a turning point in the conflict and in American history. It's the moment that the northern cause seems hopeless to not only the United States, but the world as well. One constant fear during the war was that the Confederates would use their cotton exports to leverage support from Europe. And in Turtle Dove's world, this becomes a reality. Britain and France recognize the way the war is going and recognize the cause of the Confederates. Even if they're against the practice of slavery, they sure do like that cotton, and it's yeah. always good to side with the victor. So yeah. Europe forces the United States to enter negotiations. However, I'm going to disagree. The more that I've thought... <sighs> Or have at least kind of studied uh, Civil War in American history classes. Um, because of the idea of slavery alone and how the Union shifted the... Originally, the, the war broke out as a way to save the Union, keep the Union together. It then shifted over time, I think around 18, end of 1861 or 1862, it shifted into a war about ending slavery, make it propaganda, you know? It wasn't, it was never originally about ending slavery. Um, Abraham Lincoln was not even going to end slavery originally. He was originally wanting to, like, I think just contain it. Um, because also, slave economy is not sustainable. Um, and neither is a purely agricultural economy like the South has is not sustainable long term. Um, but I think because of the way that the Union labeled the war as a war against slavery, I don't even think if the South had won at Philadelphia and captured, I do not think that would have still been enough to get the Brit British and the French to side with them, especially because... The Union also has the ships to blockade the entire South. So that's why I find as that's, that's, that's where I think of it. Because now if the Union did not have a strong naval presence, yes, I think I think Britain and France could be convinced. But I think because the Union had an extremely strong naval blockade, I do not think Britain and France would have gotten themselves involved. Negations with the South. It's over. The Civil War, or War of Succession as it comes to be called, has come to an end. A peace treaty is signed, and the Confederate States of America is officially recognized. Now two rival nations are forced to share the same continent. Lincoln's legacy is in shambles, his rise to power is seen as what divided the country, and he's soon voted out of office. Now in our timeline, Lincoln's entire legacy was always on the line. The actions he took were often seen as one of a dictator, and if the war was lost, it would have backfired immensely. Yes. So, the CSA now rules itself. 
Now what? The 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 amount of central government empowerment that occurred through the Civil War I don't think was seen or has even been matched in any other point in time in American history. I think it could be argued that during World War One and World War Two we saw extreme rises of central government power, but I don't think it grew as much as like proportionately it grew as much as we would as was seen uh with the civil war well the novels actually skip over a few decades this is a time for rebuilding and expansion while the two countries have lived in peace there is always an undercurrent of tension the csa is able to achieve many dreams they actually had in our own history the great thing turtle dove is able to do is to make these play out one of which is the purchase of Cuba from Spain. Now, in our timeline, Southern Power really wanted Cuba because of the sugar fields and yeah. many foreigners that could be exploited. Cuba is yeah. purchased and becomes another state in the Confederacy. Not only that, but both North and South have been expanding West in the last 20 years. Indian Territory becomes the Confederate state of Sequoia, and general mucking about occurs in the West. Fun stuff. Not too far West, though, because the U.S. was so poor they actually couldn't purchase Alaska from the Russians, so Russia just keeps it. And nobody ever went to Hawaii, so the Sandwich Islands are now a British colony. This is the unique turn that a Southern victory has on the legacy of what we think of as America. North America is a much more hostile place. It's a muddled, complicated mess. The relationship between North and South devolves into constantly suspecting each other. Instead of American policy being towards overseas colonies expanding its tiny little empire, both nations are too poor to do much and focus on whatever the other is doing. This has to do with really one thing, slavery. Yep. He says as the entire comment section erupts. But Turtle Dove's novel, rightly so, focuses on the subject of slavery in the Confederacy. You can't avoid it, so I'm not. The issue of slavery comes up many times in the CSA. Even in the 1880s, it's still the bedrock of the South, and by this time, it's become a detriment to the image of the Confederates. Times are changing. With the Industrial Revolution in full swing, the appeal of human labor is less and less. Why keep such a system when another is much more efficient? They've maintained relationships and profitable. with Britain and France since the war. Because here's the thing, you have to... Let's say you, you treat your slaves so badly that they die. You have to buy a new one. And you also have to then, in a sense, take care of the children of that slave. Now, you could, of course, not take care of that child, but that child would die. Um, that would affect the health of the parents of that child, which in turn affects your productivity. And, of course, also, if you pay to at least have that child fed, at least decently nourished, or at least nourished enough to survive, that's another employee that you didn't have to necessarily pay for. You just had to pay for their food. But here's the thing, that's expensive to pay for their food and the place that they sleep in. Because, again, you do not want to kill them. You also do not want a disease to run rampant through your slaves because then they could all get sick and thus not be able to work the fields. What's most efficient is paying cheap labor paying them whatever well, what around this time what a penny a day or something 25 cents a day um back then was far more cost affordable than and what henry ford would even do is pay his employees good wages and this allowed him to grow as one of the most successful businessmen in history because his, he's paying his employees really good wages where they can live and also have leisure time and afford to pay for other non-essential expenses, which means they're allowed to drive the cars that he's making, which only boosts him more. So it's, it's far, this is a thing I never understand about capitalism or business owners, or, or at least corporations, not paying the employees a very solid wage. Because if they have the money, one, they're most likely to stay. That way you don't have high turnover. Two, they're most likely to then spend that money at your place of business that you operate. 
because they have the excess exp uh, expenditure to do. It only makes sense to pay them a well, a good wage because then they can buy more stuff. That's helping the economy, which in turn allows other people to buy more stuff. And because more people are buying stuff, guess what? That means your business is going to make more money. Sorry, I had to rant about about stupid corporations and how they are inherently evil and bad for the economy because they're greedy pieces of shit. Anyways, time to go back to the other greedy pieces of shit, the slave owners of the South. But both nations constantly remind them of how backwards the Southern economic model is. It's becoming an unneeded pain. So, the CSA itself has a question to ask, what to do about slavery? This is caused by all places, Mexico. With everything that changed, Mexico is still the same, in debt, and really just a mess. The failing Mexican empire, in a desperate attempt to get money, sells its two northern states, Chihuahua and Sonora, to the Confederacy. Long story short, the Union doesn't like this southern expansion, the new president is hardline anti-Confederate, and threatens war against the Confederates to stop what they're doing. Which wasn't really a smart move since the Confederates legally weren't doing anything wrong. So, what does this have yeah. to do with slavery? The Confederates knew that in a war against the Union, they might risk losing everything, and so they needed allies. The British and French would only support the CSA if they stripped away their slavery image. And so the CSA does just that. They begin to slowly get rid of the Institute of Slavery. But before talking about those ramifications, we're off to war. The Second Mexican War, which actually doesn't involve Mexico at all, so good job naming that. Now the specifics of the war aren't really important. In bang, most bang, bang. regards, it's a repeat of the first war. The US is incompetent, the South holds its own, the Mormons do some rebelling, and the British do some invading. The United States tries oh. to invade the South through Louisville, though this goes horrendously. The fighting is so brutal, it's the first use of trench warfare in modern history, and the US is forced to concede defeat. This defeat shapes the United States' relationship with the rest of the world. The Confederates have shown to be a favorite child of the British and French. This alliance causes deep resentment from the Americans. This is in a time of immigration as well, particularly German. The Second Mexican oh, War is in I know where this is going. the U.S. forever becomes enemies with the British and French, oh, who choose boy. time and time again to side with the Confederates. So the U.S. goes looking for more allies. The heavily Germanic United States finds a natural friend in another underdog country, the German Empire. As the 20th century comes around the corner, secret alliances are drawn, not just as tensions rise in Europe, but on the North American continent as well. Now, this is just one book. Turtle Dove's Southern Victory series is quite long, far too much content to cover for, say, a 10-minute YouTube video or 20-minute video, so that's why I'm splitting this into a few parts. So, how will I... Hey, Cody! Hey, Emperor Tigerstar. Look, this series is far too long to cover by just myself, so how about let's do this? Split it up into four parts. I cover part one and three, you cover part two and four. I mean, that's quite a bit of work, and also, I only came over to ask you to stop- Well, it's settled then! Fantastic! Part two will be on Emperor Tigerstar channel, and then part three with mine in July, and so forth. Do I have a say in the- This is Cody of Alternate History Hub. This video was brought to you by Oh, okay. All right, so that means we're going to have to be checking out uh, Emperor Tiger Star's channel soon. Um, yeah, that was the alternate world of a Southern victory. I think I said my <laughs> my thoughts pretty well. Uh, corporations bad, slavery bad. The CSA, I do not think, could have survived, even if they had won the war. I think it's still highly unlikely that the British and French, or at least... Maybe one would have sided with the CSA, but I do not think both would have. And I think the French have closer ties to the... Well, no, because of um, New Orleans. Maybe the French might have closer ties to the CSA uh, because of Louisiana. But no, I still feel, I feel like the French would have a closer tie to the North than they would to the CSA. 
the Brit the British are the ones that are kind of flippy floppy. They've also kind of, they're kind of also kind of flippy floppy throughout history. So uh, yeah, that was the alternate world of a Southern victory by Alternate History Hub. I hope you guys enjoyed. Remember to hit that like button and subscribe for more. Leave a suggestion down below for what you want to see me react to next, and I will see you guys in the next video.